I consider myself a skeptic. Now, to me, it's clear what it means to be a skeptic and what it means to be a believer. But I can't tell you the number of times that people have called me a believer, that I believe in the official story of 9-11 or the official story of evolution or the coronavirus or what have you. Those people would probably consider themselves the real skeptics. They're skeptical about what the government tells us or they're skeptical about the hidden agenda of science and so on. So is skepticism subjective? Can anyone call themselves a skeptic no matter what position on a topic they take? No, skepticism is a specific thing. Some positions are skeptical and some are just the opposite. Mostly this has to do with standards of evidence and I'll get to that in a bit. But first I wanna give my personal rule of thumb on how to tell a skeptic from a believer. The rule is, if you'd be more excited than disappointed to be proved wrong about something, then you're a skeptic about that thing. A believer, on the other hand, is someone who'd be more disappointed than excited to be proved wrong. Let's look at an example. This is one of the famous Navy UFOs that's been in the news. It shows what appears to be an object going very fast over the surface of the ocean. One explanation is that it's something boring, like a balloon. But how can a balloon be racing along at such speed? So people have speculated that it's secret technology being tested, or even an alien craft. The debunker Mick West has proposed a simple explanation involving something not moving fast at all, but appearing to via the effect of parallax. The object is at an intermediate altitude but the telephoto lens makes it look closer to the water than it is. Now, would I be excited to learn about revolutionary technology or that we're being visited by aliens? Well, of course, who wouldn't? But I saw that video and I thought, you know, this probably has a boring, mundane explanation like so many other UFO videos before it. That is the default skeptical position. People who see this and think, Wow, this is evidence of something incredible. Would clearly be disappointed to find out it's only a balloon or whatever, and an unintentional camera trick. The believer mindset interprets limited information as evidence of something significant. The skeptic mindset assumes that it only seems significant, and we just don't have enough information to make that leap. Information is a big part of the distinction between a skeptic and a believer. A skeptic works carefully with the information that's available, while a believer fills in information that isn't there to create a fanciful picture more to their liking. Carl Sagan in Cosmos captured this perfectly. I can't see a thing on the surface of Venus. Why not? Because it's covered with a dense layer of clouds. Well, what are clouds made of? Water, of course. Therefore, Venus must have an awful lot of water on it. Therefore, the surface must be wet. Well, if the surface is wet, it's probably a swamp. If there's a swamp, there's ferns. If there's ferns, maybe there's even dinosaurs. Observation, you couldn't see a thing. Conclusion, dinosaurs. Someone who believes that dinosaurs are roaming around Venus would be disappointed to learn that it's just sulfuric acid and CO2. But if you look through a telescope and see nothing in particular, and you default to the skeptical position of, we don't know what's there, well then finding dinosaurs later on would be super exciting. Notice that the dinosaurs on Venus theory requires a bunch of ad hoc assumptions and conditions. It's always useful to count up the necessary conditions when comparing two possible explanations. And I made a video about that. The skeptical mindset requires evidence for all of the conditions that go into an explanation. And the more extraordinary those conditions are, the more extraordinary the evidence needs to be. Believers are more likely to take for granted all of the conditions that connect things together. And that's what allows their imagination to run riot. And it leads them to believe in these fantastical conclusions. 
For example, over the years, lots of people have accused me of being a shill who's paid by the government to spread disinformation. Now, I'm sure they'd be disappointed to find out what my income actually is, but they just go straight to believing the wildly fanciful story that suits them based on little or no information. Observation. I make YouTube videos that they don't like. Conclusion. I'm a paid shill.